Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy, and man, we've got a lot to go over. Um, lots of treasure. Um, okay, so let's move right on to into in the chapel. Palms 46:1. God is our refuge and strength, the very present, a very present help in trouble. Um, you'll understand why I am leaning on that this week. Um, last week I should have been leaning on it because everything went haywire, but we'll get to that in, in the farmhouse, just saying. So, um, let's move on into totally hooked. Um, I think I don't have anything totally hooked that you haven't already seen. I did that poncho. Um, I am working on things, which this is really weird for me because I've normally been a monogamous knitter or monogamous crocheter and I still have the infinity scarf that I keep going back to whenever I do it. That clink clink you hear is Hitch. He's having breakfast. Um, Moose is in the other room. He's just laying on the couch. I, guess. I don't know. But I'm normally a pretty monogamous uh, crocheter or projector because normally when I'm spinning something I don't have a crochet going on I don't have this and as I get older I'm just like want to do all the things and I'm, I've become very impatient and I don't know why because they're fun ah, we know why okay so I got my kit and we'll start there because I have started working on it and I think I've gone in about two different directions um, with this. First I've got the one thing of color work done um, for the headband. This is a headband. It had I had to stop and think. But I also hang on. Yes. I told you I should be I got the hat cuff done and I have started the actual rounds. So um, okay, so I did adapt the pattern just a little bit to my style, um, and it looks the same, it's just far less complicated. So, um, and it, I'm going to say it looks the same, it looks a close enough. Okay, if you look at the pattern, see the little white things that go right here, that go, okay. So mine aren't as cattywampus. They go straight down. And it's because as I get older, I need something I don't have to think about. The stitch that they had me doing was big and bulky. And you were single crocheting around one stitch down to the next. And it made it bulky. If this is going to be a headband, I don't want all that bulk on my head. So, I modified it a little bit, changed a little bit of the stitch, and that's what's happening here. As you can tell, I frogged part of it because I am changing the stitch. The look is the same. The pattern is all the same. I'm changing that one stitch in the pattern. That, that's it. Um, but it's, it's a cool stitch, it, but it has you crochet a single crochet and then the very next one you single crochet down to the row below but it says to go over your stitch on top that's in that spot it just it's bulky I don't like the way it lays it's just me and if I was going to use it I wouldn't use it for hats and stuff like that I would use it but with a lighter weight yarn because that way it's not this is a big thick worsted and I don't work with a lot of worsted or let's put it this way I don't work with thicker yarns most of the time I'm using a fingering weight or a DK is about as big as I've really gone so this is out of my norm and like I said it's a cool pattern and mine looks close enough that I'm happy with it so yeah, we're just going to go there. I'll get some more done on it. Um, the other thing is, is that I had that beautiful blue. Yes, in my money bag. <laughs> and yes, the money bag is one that I've made. So, 
I might get back if there was a call to have these um, see-through bags again um, I like that I can see which project is in it without opening it up and I don't have to remember so I actually use the ones that RJ and I made um, a lot more than I use anything else so um, yeah okay so I'm about halfway and I it got squished but I'm about halfway through this cake <laughs> Um, and I am a, a standard shawlette out of it, so this isn't as long as it's going to be, but pretty much you are going to make sleeves off of this here, and then this goes behind your back. Um, I do think it's beautiful, okay? Don't know that you can see that real well. Um, they're blues, there's sparkle in it even roommate likes it so and I've gotten that far on it um, eh, and the pooling is just it looks stripy but it's really not I know the cameras making it do that it's just the way it pools it's all blues and it looks like this see it's there we go but it's not doing the blues justice it's the blue has more of a purpley gray hue okay so yeah all right so there's that one and like i said i don't know why i've just gotten crazy i'm fighting with the cord i've got it on the wrong side of the chair <laughs> hang on i don't want to be fighting with it forever so <laughs> there it goes Ooh, now it's on my back okay there we go um so that is what I have on the hook, but not what I have in the basket. Um, it's not totally hooked, but I have a lot more in the basket. So, one of the local yarn shops was going out of, of business. And if you follow me, you know that I took a shawl pattern and made it into a poncho. And it turned out beautifully. Which, then I got to thinking about it. And I loved it so much that one of the people that I'm making a Christmas gift for loves the color red. So I went down a local yarn shop, just kind of nosing because they were going out of business. How can you not go? And I told y'all I don't have a stash. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't have a stash. So I just kind of pick things up as I have things, uh, ideas for them let's put it that way and the first two cakes that I ever bought one of them I didn't and that was just here lately one of them I didn't have a, uh, a pattern for I didn't have a project for I just thought it was beautiful so I bought the blue and the other one was for the virus shawl my hair is still wet and it's driving me crazy I've got this one piece right here I don't think it knows what side it goes on um but anyway so that was the first one that I've ever really bought and just said oh it's beautiful gotta have it and not know what I'm gonna do with it until I found that other pattern so and I went on a a, a hunt for that pattern um, for a pattern not necessarily that pattern because I think that one I'm just winging it I looked at something and said, oh that looks cute I bet I could do this there is no pattern for it, so don't ask. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just chained a few, and then I did, um, I'm double crocheting up the edge so that when I get to where I make the cuffs, it'd be perfectly even, but pretty much I'm using a V-stitch uh, a and a shell stitch, which are pretty much just double crochets. So anyway, that's that pattern, but I did find this beautiful 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 red and this camera is not doing it justice um, it is Christmas tree Christmas fire engine red and I was able to get these lovely beauties they are 100% wool they're um, Peruvian Highland wool I got five of them and I think there's 200 and 
some yards in each one. Of course, these tags are funny, and I had a hard time even at the store reading them because you can't read half of it because it's twisted in the hank. So, anyway, let me see here. I remember reading it. 220 yards. Um, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. So, 220 yards is going to make a huge virus poncho for um, a young lady who is getting a Christmas gift from me. So, that will be... And you know how fast I whip those out. That's not going to take any time. I just have to get my butt started on it. But while I was there, for the second time, in like a month, I don't know why, maybe two months, I saw this and, oh, that's pretty. I really should get that. I have no idea what I'm going to do with that. But I have two skeins. And I know I'm not showing them to you yet, am I? Um, let me get the reading part done. Uh, approximately 440 yards I believe it says and this is more my weight but I can't believe that's 440 yards I don't know we'll see 100 grams 440 yards and it's it's more my weight of yarn it's the little fingering type weight that I like it's the it is what I spin it is what I like. It is what it is. And it's a two ply. But anyway, check out this color. It is not orange. It is more of a red pink. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really look that orange in the here I'll show you. This is some of the red. See? And that's just, but it doesn't ever get that dark in the skein. If you open it up, it is like so. It's got the brown in the middle. And it goes down to red, down to here. And it, it is almost a pinkish, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a really cool color. But, ugh, let me get this back together. But it is not orange like this is showing up, okay? I wish it would show up a little bit better. And it's not that peachy. It It is more of a red and pink. This right here looks pink. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pink. But it's not this dark red. I'm just showing you that it's red, red. If you can see that right up there <laughs> until I adjusted, it. it's almost there. We go. Eh, it's getting there. But anyway, I got two skeins, so I have. If the yardage is right, I've got 800 yards of this. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but this would make a beautiful poncho, um, hat set, scarves. You know, I, I don't know, but I love it. I, I have no idea why I fell in love with it. Um, the bright red, I didn't fall in love with the red. I love it. It's got great color. And as far as the red goes, it is perfect. But I don't like red. Just saying. It is for a very specific gift that I learned while improvising that shawl. And that specific gift needs to be red because that's her favorite color just saying so yeah i got those all right now in the pots i didn't dye anything um this week i got the mohair we'll go right on to on the wheel because i got the mohair off the wheel i am so excited like i said i have two three wheels um I have the traditional, Ashford traditional, and then I've got the original Kiwi, an Ashford Kiwi. Not a two or a three or any of that, it's an Ashford Kiwi, before they started coming out with others numbering them. Um, and then I've got the big walking wheel. All of them are empty because, and, and this was a great, great 
motivator, to be honest with you. Let me grab this right here. Um, so a friend of mine had been ordering some stuff from R.H. Lindsay and Company, and she was like, you need to try this. I said, really? Not like I don't have enough fleece, but the prep work has already been done on this. So, and it was super affordable. Okay, and if you know me, um, a lot of this stuff was less than $8 an entire pound. So, yeah, it, it was super, super affordable for $8 a pound. And then if you were to do something, I do everything by the ounces. So that'd be 16 ounces for eight bucks. That is not bad. I mean, that's huge. That's amazing price. Um, we sell raw for the price they're selling this processed at. So yeah, I'm super, super stoked. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd get 16 ounces for about eight bucks. Now some of them are 750, some of them are um, you can get merino for 14, you know, and that's still less than a dollar a pound. If you think about it, a pound is 16 ounces. So if you're getting 16 ounces for four something or for 14, that's less than a dollar a pound. So I, I don't know how they're doing this or why I really don't care I got me some and y'all want to check it out with me let me show you all right so this is what two pounds looks like all right this one is a New Zealand Romney top okay it is soft um it's almost next to skin soft it's um remember that when you're doing this a lot of people that hair is getting to me again um a lot of people will take this and once it's spun it while it feels good like this the twist makes it a little bit sturdier and feel a little different so when you're testing something grab you a piece and, and you can see I've already pulled out <laughs> um, don't just go like this because if you plan on putting a lot of twist in it you're gonna find that it changes the softness of it just because it changes the texture of it so put grab you a piece of goodness give it a twist okay you can see how that's gonna work up and then give it a and once you do that this is great for next to skin when you first go like this it feels a little scratchy but when you twist it I'm really curious to see how it's gonna work up because I don't know if you can see it doesn't really look twisted but twisted it I would say on my hand next skin now you guys know right here I am super sensitive and I don't like to do this because everything is itchy there. Even my own clothes going like this is itchy and I use tons of fabric softener. So this is the, it's product number 1021 and it's called New Zealand Romney Top and I bought two pounds. Yeah, it's amazing. So I like that one. Yes, I have this big box over here, and I'm going to literally put it back down over here and put these in it. Hitch, no. Okay. Now, now you won't have to see me bouncing around so much. Okay, so the next thing that I got is Domestic 56S Wool Top. I don't really know what the 56S means. I know micron count and I've never heard it referred to as S. I don't know. But this cannot be 56 micron. This is super, super soft. Okay. Let me make sure I've got the wrong one. The right one. Yep. Okay. So this is, it just says domestic 56S wool top. 
okay it's product number 91 and it's a beautiful beautiful creamy it, it's not a white me, um, let me put something white up against it here we go we'll use back of the invoice it is more let's see if i can take a piece out yeah, wrong way there we go it is a yellow kind of creamy it's not yellow but it is a creamy off-white um i'm really trying to figure out a color that i can tell you but it, it's just i don't know it, it's a really light buttery cream color so yeah i like it and it's actually softer i think when doing my little test thing than the new zealand romney top and romney is not a bad fleece at all i mean it's not a bad breed the micron count on it is normally pretty decent so you know both of those i am super impressed with now the second one i mean the third one and this is product 21 dk primitive wool s slash c i don't know what that means but it's product number 21 dk and you guys know that i like primitives i like um i, I don't know i just so this i pulled out i had my end this is the one that i had the end and then i lost the end and i ended up pulling out like i'm doing right now to find the end where did it go and then i ended up putting it back in there and i can't find my end but anyway yeah okay so i'm having trouble finding an end <laughs> just saying i normally will take this and roll this flat and put it in pounds or ounces just because i only spin so many ounces at a time because that's what my bobbers will hold um bobbins will hold so is this next to soft now this is primitive and as far as primitive goes i'm liking this um yeah i don't know if you can see that but it is and, and you can see it's got a couple of guard hairs or whatever i don't care i like the way a primitive looks old-fashioned um I, I know it's a probably a psychological thing because you can make um any of the wools look old-fashioned but i love the way primitives work up it is not the softest that i got the other two were but i love that primitive if you're gonna have now remember primitive breeds can be there's a bunch of them but if you remember we owned shetlands which were considered primitives um what else did we own uh the south down baby dolls were considered older primitive type throwbacks um it they weren't bred for they, they were bred for everything they weren't bred for just one specific thing they were bred and i did bring my um fiber and fleece book out here so i could research a little bit on these but i haven't gotten to this is my first week okay my first week my week runs from thursday to thursday so when i got off work thursday i've been off my regular time for the first time in a month yeah so i know that's in a different department here okay so what else i like about this um i ordered from this and it's called rh Lindsay company um you can just google her that's what i did um she includes and i kind of like this because it's a daughter i had okay let me back up i had a little bit of a problem with it but it was because it was lost in the mail okay so i ended up calling them and they had put they they hand key everything in they're not i don't think they're a huge operation um but 
they, uh, Grace is the daughter and Phil is the dad. So, I don't know if there's other people that were there, but when I talked to Grace, she said, oh, well, you know, if you find it, let my dad know. So, I did, but they put a little handwritten note, you know, and, and it's nothing great. Christy, thank you for your order. Enjoy the wool, Grace and Phil. What does that tell me? Quality control. They have their hands in. They're the owners. They have their hands in, you know, doing this. You can see check marks on the invoice. Um, it's, I think they're just kind of a little small thing. They got an email saying, hey, you've got an order through their shop. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I had put in my shipping address. You know, there, this is take two because there is the farm address and now my address. And we'll get into that in RJ's world too on how that's going to go around. But anyway, um, so when I got my box, of course I pulled those three out. We're touching and squishing and all kinds of stuff. At the very bottom of the box, I find one. And keep in mind, they do everything just by product. When that product has gone out, you know, when they're out of that product, they're out of that product. The wool is not this big thing that you can just keep reproducing the same stuff. Every year, every sheep's fleece changes. Okay, so when they do a batch and they number it, when that product is gone, I'm pretty sure it's gone. Um, this is a, uh, it comes across as a mill, so I don't know. But they sent me this little, just wrapped in brown paper, it was just a little thing, with this little thing inside of it. Okay, so this looks a lot like those Shetlands that I did, except it's been processed and there's no crimp. I like to do it raw because that doesn't mess with the crimp. And it's not, there's no crimp, okay? I misspoke. Um, I like to keep all the crimp. I, I don't want it combed out and all that stuff. I like it kinky curly. But this is a SP27T, and it says $8 a pound, which most of their stuff runs about that. I think some are $7.50. On that invoice, it, you know gives me a total price. I think some were $7.50 and some were, but I just run about $8 a price. The most expensive thing I bought was $17 for two pounds. So if you divide that in half, that's $8.50. Um, the cheapest one was $15. So that makes it $7 and a half. So I think the other one was eight and a quarter. You know, so right at eight bucks. So this, number one, it's natural colored and they don't even know that that's my favorite okay it is comparable to that Romney top I mean if I do this and and you can tell I've been playing with it um, and I've just taken it and you know remember the twist will um, if you do a lot of twist it actually can make your yarn a little bit rougher just because it's all tight but this yeah give it a twist rub it um is it next to my neck nope i can tell you right now it's not anywhere near soft i have an issue with what goes up around my neck so this is a very sensitive spot for me and you'll find that i don't put a lot of wool around there because i just can't handle it so but I'm going to guess that this is probably an ounce, a little ounce, you know, maybe it, it's actually rolled in there pretty tight. I mean, look at this. It might be two ounces. I'm not really sure, but I know it's enough for me to make something and it's amazing. So I am loving this. And I love that they just threw it in as a free sample. That tickled me to death. Um, doesn't everybody love something for free? Uh, yeah, I, I love it. And the fact that it's down to earth, it, it's kind of like RJ and I's packing. We did everything in brown paper. Um, we never got outlandish with anything. That is 
I don't know. I just feel like they're my style. Does that make sense? Um, so you might be seeing a lot more from them, depending. I'm going to keep watching their website and see how often things uh, change and how often things are done differently. Uh, how often they do a batch. Does that make sense? But I am absolutely in love with their products. For the price and making things affordable, remember, that's $8 a pound. That is 50 cents an ounce. We used to sell our Moreno for 50 cents an ounce, raw, right off the sheep. Um, we would sell our Shetland and stuff for about a quarter, you know, just anywhere between there. I don't think we didn't have anything over a dollar an ounce. Um, we sold it by the pound, by the ounce, however people wanted it. And we didn't have anything over a dollar um, per ounce. So you could get an entire fleece for, you know, less than 20 bucks. You could order it by the ounce and we would ship you out an ounce so yeah i'm really really liking this because it goes along with me keeping things affordable keeping things where other people can play in them and getting people into it so uh i can't say enough i haven't spun anything because i just got the mohair off i washed it this morning which if you know me Washing it, setting the twist, rinsing it, all that is one. It's not being dyed, so it's already up to dry. Or I would have dyed it this morning. Um, but it's not dying. I'm not dying it. It's staying neutral. And it is getting out of my hair. Thank God. Ugh. I just, when I don't like spinning it, it takes me forever. So, and this box was a great motivator because I was like, yeah, I, oh, I could do it on the other wheel. I don't want to. I want that mohair gone and so this was a big motivator and it's done I, I'm just happy with it <laughs> I'm just happy it's gone um, so we're gonna move right on into RJ's world and in the farmhouse because there's something that overlaps there and this is why it's called take two uh, okay so RJ in his world he's been going to a little rope ins uh, a lot of stuff going on with him the truck had to go which is why I'm drawing on God a lot right now because if he can't carry me I'm in trouble big trouble so as a woman going into an automotive shop they automatically look at you like your stupid is stamped across your forehead okay I do know how to service my own car I know how to like take things off and put them back like an alternator or the thermostat or little things just little common things um, I suck at doing my brakes because now everything is that um, pressure clamp together when I got the truck I couldn't do them so I haven't done them in years and I just take it someplace okay I am a stickler about servicing my vehicles RJ had a problem with the truck um, one of the tires was wearing unevenly I don't do tires I just know what can cause it so I told him I said you need to take that truck and have it aligned so he takes it into a place a quote reputable business takes it in there they keep it all day finally get back with him um, and keep in mind we live you know out of town the farm is 12 miles from the nearest town he told was told he had an appointment at like seven o'clock eight o'clock I don't remember it was early in the morning finally about three o'clock in the afternoon and after RJ's gone all day without a vehicle they tell him they need to replace all the ball joints and it's gonna cost him about fifteen hundred dollars RJ says, I don't have $1,500. I'll come get the truck, get some money together, and I'll have to get back with you. So, me being me, 
I have a mechanic that has been our mechanic for longer than RJ's been alive. And I told him, I said, call Josh. He says, well, okay. So he calls Josh. Josh says, yeah, I can do it a lot cheaper than that. Don't do that. So he gets it up on the lift. He takes it to RJ. Well, first, in between there, there's a, a ice storm. And the truck wouldn't start when it was negative 12 degrees. A lot of things won't start when it's negative 12 degrees. Okay, just saying. So he missed his first appointment with Josh. So then he took it the second time. Um, and Josh is like, yeah, I got this. Josh puts it up on the lift, calls RJ, and he says, you need to come get this truck. And RJ says, you said that you'd have it all day. And he goes, I can't fix it. And RJ's like, are you kidding me? And he goes, dude, it's not the ball joints. Your ball joints are fine. He says, if your ball joints are bad, every vehicle I have has got bad ball joints. And he said, and trust me, I've got a wife that drives and a daughter that goes to college. And he says, and they are not driving on bad ball joints. He says, your truck is fine. He says, I want you to come pick it up. And he says, and I want to refer you over to this little alignment guy. And he said, because... If the first place put this up on a lift and said your ball joints were bad, they're trying to rip you off. Now, every woman that's ever walked into an auto parts or auto service probably has had this happen at least once to them. They think you're stupid. They saw RJ coming. We have a very nice truck because of what RJ does for his living, okay? And we have a nice truck and trailer. I'm not gonna put him out on the road unsafe so we have a king ranch big white um four door one ton pulls up five horse slant truck and they saw him coming and they're like we're gonna get him for money and he he didn't let it happen okay so first off he didn't have the money to get so that right there stopped him <laughs> but he took Josh's recommendation. He called the guy that Josh said, and he said, can you please, you know, help me look at this? He tells this guy the entire story, how he took it into one and ball joints. And the guy says, yeah, he said, bring it over here on my lunch hour. He says, I, was, I brought my lunch and I was just going to eat here. He goes, which I don't do very often. He says, I don't know why I did today. We all know it's a God wink. He needed to be there for our day. Um, but he says, bring it over. And on my lunch hour, he says, I own this shop. I'm the only man that works here. I'm not putting my name in somebody else's hands. So bring it over here. I'll look at it. And he says, if you need ball joints, that way you've got time to get the money together. If you need something else, we'll figure out what's going on with this truck. He said, there's obviously an issue because it's not wearing your tires evenly. RJ says, okay. So he drives it over there. He, the guy puts it up on a lift, puts this machine on it. Um, RJ said he made a few marks. He tweaked a little bit, tightened a few things up, which I think it was a loose tie rod. And he says, and he took it down off the lift and he says, dude, you're good to go. Don't forget to rotate your tires. These trucks are really bad about not wearing evenly. And he says, and the reason being, it's because you're pulling. He says, your back end, you know, is is really pulling that trailer and the front end is pulling against concrete. He says, they're not working evenly, so they're not gonna wear evenly. He says, you always rotate your tires on this big of a truck, pulling what you pull. RJ's like, okay, um, what do I owe you? The guy's like, 45 bucks. That's what I charge for an hour. Didn't cost me any labor or anything. He said, cost you an hour of my time. RJ called me ecstatic and he's like mom I actually already paid the bill and the truck is fixed and ah. and I was like you managed to pay the bill how and he was it was only $45 I had that much in my pocket <laughs> so anyway he was super ecstatic that he got it fixed but lesson learned always get a second opinion okay and if you have a mechanic find one you trust because 
everyone told him that because that was wearing different, the first guys were supposed to put it on a lift, check it all out, you need new ball joints. Two other people that do it for a living, one which I trust, I have trusted with my truck to get it to Dallas and back at the age of, how old was that truck the last time we took it, 17? It was a 17 year old truck. And the last year that we went, we took Kevin's truck because mine had started to have just a few tweaks and stuff and I didn't want to get down there and get stuck. Um, so yeah, I think that truck was 17 years old and Josh serviced that truck and made sure it would get me there and back. And he didn't have any qualms. He's like, I'd trust this truck. 17 year old truck, gas at that. And if you remember, I had that truck through all the pot. You guys never saw any other truck because I'd had it since day one. So, um, yeah, bought it off of a older gentleman who just didn't need a big uh, F-150 anymore. And he went down to a little, I don't know, Ford Ranger thing. And I bought it off of him and he was the first owner and I was the second owner and it had always been serviced. And when we got rid of that gold truck, 325,000 miles on a gas engine. So yeah, servicing it has something to say for it, but getting a second opinion is just as important. And RJ figured that out. He's like, mom, why did they do that to me? I said, cause you're young and you're cocky. I said, they saw you come and I said, the way you carry yourself, the way you handle yourself. I said, they saw a young cocky kid with money because how could he own that truck if he didn't? He goes, mom, I don't own that truck. You do. I said, I know that. I get it. But they don't know that. And so, and they don't understand I'm making payments on that truck. I don't really own it. Me and the bank own it. So yeah, we, he, hard lesson learned. But then you compound that where was I at Friday when he called me to come and take him out to pick up the truck from Josh to take it to the other guy? Well, back up, negative 12 degree weather, and my car threw a, the check engine light through a code. So um, I had put a catalytic, it was an O2 issue. So it could have been the sensors, it could have been the catalytic converter. There's a lot of things it could have been. So I put a, a cleaner through it, a high dollar cleaner through my car that takes care of the like catalytic converters and the sensors and all that stuff. It's supposed to clean it. But in the meantime, I figured it's got a hundred and some thousand miles on it. I better take it to be serviced. So I took it into the Hyundai dealership um, Friday. And I had an appointment for, to go from there to get new tires, but I missed that appointment because it took longer at that dealership to get it. And as we all know, everything takes appointments nowadays, and I'll tell you how I know that. Um, and in between there, I was supposed to go and renew my driver's license because it expires February, the end of February. It's my birthday month, right? So I'm over at the dealership having my car putting it through this 176 point inspection um, came out and it looked like the bill was going to be about $1,500 for my car. Nothing major though. Um, the engine was fine. Uh, I have that invoice in the other room, but like that was new battery, new tires, new windshield wiper blade on the rear. Um, what was something else? Oh, spark plugs. Uh, all this plus labor. Um, there was quite a few things. But, there's a saving grace to that one too. So, um, anyway, I was over getting my car checked out. Well, I missed my appointment to get my tires. So, I actually called another guy, had him order me two. He could have it here by noon. Then I could get at least two on because I had a back one that was really, really bad. So I'm gonna have him order. I had to give a little bit more for them. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, it's gonna cost me probably 100 bucks more to do it that way, but I didn't have a choice. I needed those tires. And I knew I needed those tires. So, um, and just so you know, this is the first thing I've ever had done on that car in the two years that I've owned it. I had, other than service maintenance. 
brakes are still good, everything. And the battery that's in it is actually the original battery that came with the car. Just saying. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so I missed my tire appointment, but I ran, got this guy to order some others, ran RJ to the mechanic, came back, and on the way to get my tires, because the tires were supposed to be here about noon instead of 10, it was going to be noon. I was like, okay, I'll get my driver's license on the way. Well, <laughs> I started calling everywhere. I went to the first one and it was closed down. It has permanently closed. The second one, I walked in and there's not anybody in there. And they look at me and say, oh, if you don't have an appointment, we're, we're not taking you. Really? So I started calling. The next one I called, it has this lovely thing on the answer machine about their hours and all this stuff. But if this is February 26th, we're closed due to a funeral. Great. So I literally start calling every tag agency that comes up on Google. I Googled it and I started driving from the top of 169 down. There's Ulaga, um, Talala, Collinsville. I even called Claremore. Finally, the guy in Claremore was the nicest and he goes, ma'am, he said, there's only certain days that any of us are taking walk-ins because it's just too hard to meet all the COVID guidelines and stuff without being by appointment. And he said, so if you want to renew your drive, he says, you can do it online. I said, oh, really? I said, okay, so I'm going to do it, right? It took me like three or four tries. I never could get the thing to take my phone, no my phone number in my thing, my account. So I ended up coming to the house and doing it on the laptop where I had been trying to do it on my phone. But supposedly <laughs> I got my driver's license renewed. I don't have it in my hand, but I have submitted it and done what I can do. And now I just sit and wait. Um, so I uh, got done with that. <laughs> Went down, got my two tires. One of the things that was um, said to be wrong with my car was that the fuel, the oil was overfilled. Well, the Friday before I'd had an oil fill change done at this other guy's place. So yeah, I talked to him about that. He went back out and he checked it. He's like, mm, nope. He says, look, and he pulled it out. And then I had roommate who make shift mechanic, um, not makeshift, a damn good mechanic. Um, although, if you ask, they'll say they're not. But anyway, had it checked by them and it's fine. So I'm not going to have to redo an oil change in it because you can't just take a little oil out. <laughs> you know, you just can't. But anyway, so all of that is going on. The spring weather hits. And RJ and I and roommate has agreed um, we're going to, there, there's about seven acres here. Now the house and, and the backyard takes a little bit and the shop takes a little bit. But there's acreage right here that has uh, grass on it and it has a pond. So we are going to put some cattle out here just about three or four head nothing major one is going to be our next feeder you know that we raised gordy and put him in our freezer um we're going to do the same thing he's got a bum leg um pretty much like gordy's but i'm not sure how it happened i don't think rj knows how it happened but he just said that he's got a bum leg and we're going to put it out here as a feeder let it grow and be just a pet for a while and then um, we'll have some cows out here, but we have to get together. And that's what one of the things that's happening in the farmhouse is we're getting stuff together to rework the fence. Um, once we get the fence up, the cattle can come in. He's gathering some feed bunks. This house doesn't have any feed bunks. It's not being a, a country farm or anything. When he brings the feed bunks and, and the stuff to fix the fence, he's also going to bring me my grow tower so that I can grow food. 
because I can't have a garden that the cows are going to get in. So, grow tower it is. Um, the last thing that I did is I started back with my soap making stuff. Um, I moved it down here and uh, the first thing that I made is, this is in my eye, I'm sorry. The first thing that I made was some lotion bars. I haven't made anything else. I made them primarily because I needed them. Negative 12 degree weather and my skin was so dry. So I made them. I'm happy with them. I, I made big ones. I didn't make the little ones for sale or anything, just for personal use, but I had fun. So I may have some stuff that I may sell on Facebook um, after I make soaps. I'm going to play with it again. I still have my original recipes that it took me two years to perfect. I always wrote them down. I have a notebook for that and we will see. I may have my hot seller of course was the tomato and goat's milk soap. Um, I will probably produce that one first because it's great for acne and I have the minute I put it out there that I have some, I know it's going to sell like that. Sorry. Alright. Anyway, um, I know it's going to sell just like that. So that will probably be the first one that I produce. Okay, because I do have faithful people that want that and can't find it anywhere else. Can't find it like I make it. Let's put it that way. So... I know that this has been a long podcast, but I had a lot of treasure, a lot of things going on in the farmhouse. Um, lesson from this is, is just lean on God because God has a plan. Make sure you get those um, second opinions because, like I said, RJ's God wink this week was a pain. He had to go through three people, all to find out it was a $45 fix, something he could afford. So financially, God blessed us. And he learned a valuable lesson. Okay. Um, as for me, dealerships prices are too high. <laughs> but um, we ordered all the parts for my car for like $45 online. And I'm not going to tell you where because I don't endorse any online stuff. Um, but yeah, everything from the spark plugs to the rear, uh, thing. And I think we got everything but the tires and the battery for $45 that they said on that list that I needed. Yep. So just saying it is what it is, but, um, in the next week, my car will be perfect and the truck will be perfect. And my journey will just be kind of rolling. I mean, it's been a lot of stress and a lot of stuff going on. Um, and of course, in working a lot, my stress level's been way up here. So, but after this weekend, it's not. Um, I didn't have to work. All that stuff got lined out with a truck. All the stuff got lined out with a car. It's almost like after Friday, somebody flipped a switch and said, you're done. And I am. So this morning I got up and it was just, I mean, I had a nice quiet weekend. Um, this weekend, roommate and I needed to get some more wood in here. We got that done. Um, needed to get a couple of, I can't even remember what it was, but we ended up smoking a brisket outside. It was so nice on the little round charcoal or, you know put it on there, put the stuff, and just smoke that baby low and slow. And oh my word, it was so good. So yeah, we've just been kind of hanging out. This weekend has just been like no pressure. It, it After Friday, and I came home, and I was so stressed out about that $1,500 bill because RJ had just said, hey mom, I got ours done for 45 and I'm like, yeah, but I'm still looking at another $1,500. What do I do now? Well, roommate's like, let me see that. Spark plugs don't cost that. What are you talking about? We can do it. And just started. Had everything lined out, done. And she's like, we're done. Okay. 
we're done. So, yeah, it 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 was pretty funny, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, told I should have come to roommate first. I didn't. It's not roommate's responsibility to take care of my car, you know. So, but roommate does have some expertise in some areas that you know. Yeah, roommate is kind of amazing. We might see about introducing you to roommate. I don't know. We'll see where that goes. But, yeah. Anyway, after Friday night, all stress was gone. Everything lined up. I had an amazing weekend just puttering. The only thing I had to do that I didn't like to do, that mohair. But it's done. It's drying. It's good. So, yeah. And I have all this lovely stuff to work on. I'm going to finish the blue one, then I'm going to start the red poncho, then I'm going to go from there. Um, the infinity scarf is still on the hook, but it's not, it's just something I was playing with. It doesn't have a pattern, I just made it up and figured it'd be a cool gift if I needed one. Alright, this has gone on long enough. I will talk at y'all later. Um, hopefully I will be able to take you out and show you a little bit of what we're doing with the cattle, bunks, water troughs, all that stuff RJ's going to bring. We just have to get out here and do the fence first. So, yeah. Then I might have some cows. Alright, I will see you guys later. Have a great day and thanks for watching.